All right, Mike, Michael, let me ask you this before I start. Yeah. Pronounce your last name. Dabul. Oh, I was 100% right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a, we're having a little contest here. Michael Dabul. <laughs> Michael, what's going on, my brother? How you doing, man? I'm, I'm feeling very well. I'm very honored to be on your podcast. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you guys for inviting me. Thank you for giving me the chance to be here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You deserve to be on this podcast, man, because I'm really, I'm really impressed with uh, what you delivered at the Arnold, you know, to be honest. Thank and you. I don't know. Thank I'm, you I'm, so I'm not sure if you heard the, uh, the commentary that we did. I I heard like yeah. when I when when you say unbelievable conditions, something like we miss something we don't see yes. every time. I was yes. like, I was really like over this, uh, like oh, no, I but believe you, I'm hearing this. Uh, but you knew that it was it's the truth. I mean, it was unbelievable. You know, if, if thank you, this thank is you. Some, something that we used to see, and and you just really don't see this anymore. You know, but let thank me you. ask you, let me ask you this because. I see on 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 your um, Instagram. Do you, you also you, you speak? Is your native language Arabic? Yes, I'm originally from Syria, and my my fluent language is Arabic. Okay, so and, and oh, so and and Michael is it's your real name, or is that just the name that? Yes, it's my real name. Like uh, it's in, in in Arabic, we call it Michel. Is that? But is, I don't I I don't let anyone call me Michel because in English. It, they will like, a think it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but in my country, it's uh, Michelle's for man. For I, man. I always thought that when uh, people that speak Arabic, if they have, when they have like Western names, that they might be Christian and not m Muslim. Yeah, they might be, but um, I have no religion, so I will not speak about this. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, no, that's not what I'm talking about. This is just why, when I read the name, yeah. I was like... Yeah, we have, like, in my country, we have 30% of Christian and about 70% of Muslims. Okay. All right, so so, yeah, so, so you're from Syria, you said? Yep, I'm originally born in Syria, and I was I lived there until I was 20. Oh, oh, tell me, tell me, how, how was it growing up in Syria, man? Because we, we all, all we hear is, you know, what's going on and, 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 and the yeah. wars and all that stuff. How was it for you growing up in Syria before you left? Yeah, it was a good country. It's like any Middle Eastern country. It's like Egypt, like Lebanon, like uh, Jordan. It was a good country. I lived there until I was 20. Like, I studied there until the revolution started. Then, like, uh, you had to, ch to choose because... The, in my country, when you turn over 18, they let you go to the army unless like you like caring about someone or you studying. Uh, with me, I have three brothers, so definitely I'm not caring about anyone because they will tell you like, let your brother care about who you're caring about. Mm. So you have only one choice is to study to avoid going to the army. So I was studying computer engineering. And uh, when I turned 20 on the third year of studying, like the revolution started. So I decided to leave the country. Uh, and I ran away to China first. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, it's <laughs> like in my, with my passport, you don't have a choice. So, like, oh, so it's hard. Which country give you, yeah, it's hard. Which country give you a visa? So you have like it's a couple of countries which is give you a visa. So I cho I chosen like uh, China. I went there. I tried to st to, go, to finish my study, but it was really difficult. I stayed there one year and a half trying to learn the language. I learned the basic. I couldn't, so I found it very difficult. I came back to Syria. I stayed there for two weeks. When I left, the, like, the situation in the country wasn't so bad. So I was like, I thought when I was in China, okay, let's get back to my country. Maybe it will get better. So when I came back, I was like, in the first three, four days, okay. Fourth day, I started hitting a lot of bombs, a lot of like... Uh, like it was scary. So it was like the movie. Like war, like, war zone. I see a bomb going down. War zone. It was, yes, war zone. It was like, wow, I can't be here. Like I was walking out. So I would just see like a rocket just moving around. Like, <laughs> like bombs everywhere. Like, you can see it. Like, yeah, like that's uh, crazy. Like 300 miles, 300 meters away, far away from mm. you. So you can see it. But it's, it's a little bit far from you. It's just lucky. Right. So I decided. Okay, that's not my that, not a place I can stay with. So I ran away again. I left first to Egypt, and then from Egypt to Turkey, and then uh, it's a long story until I, I arrived to England. But that, so, did you leave by yourself, or your whole family left? 
by myself like uh like as i told you after you turn 18 so you choose to go to the army or you are studying so most of the young people they had to leave but the, the old people they don't have to go to the army so my mom and my dad stayed because they don't want to leave the country even in the war zone they were say we're fine we're at home mm. but most of the like young people they had to leave because they have to choose to go to the army when you go to the army you need to they will give you a gun and you need to fight and you fight in your own people because it's not an enemy just people they're fighting mm. themselves someone they don't want the government someone they want the government they start fighting it's like it doesn't make any sense i don't like politics but i feel it's stupid to do what they did mm. because they fighting with each other it's it's there is no outsider it's the people from inside they fighting with each other so you don't feel it's an enemy you're just fighting your own people right that's that, yeah, yeah that's crazy that's that's really crazy so you got out of there when when did you start yeah. did you when did you start bodybuilding did you start while you're still there or you just started when you left after you left no i started exactly when i came to the uk like first i, I started training when i was 17 i just wanted like to lose fat and get like get fit so i can get some girls it's like that like any other yeah <laughs> uh, young guy so i just thought like okay i can get fit i can get some girls so i start lifting until i like i, I wasn't on and, on and off but when I came to the UK, I felt that I felt this is where I belong. I was 24. Like, I, I, I started with natural bodybuilding, so I stayed about two years. I was saying from 17, but on and off, on and off. But when I took it very serious at 20, 23. Exactly. Like, and then, like, uh, I start competing on in the end of 24. And uh, then I took it more serious. And from 25, I started, like, clearly proper bodybuilding. And how old are you now? I just turned 30. So you've just been you been just like real serious only for five years? Five, five years, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how, how fast did you turn pro? I mean, you've been, you've been, on, you've been out there so quite a, quite a while already. How, so when did you turn yeah, pro? Yeah, I turned pro for 2019 in September. So like fresh pro. <laughs> so I did like, uh, I won my pro card. I, it was a headache to win my pro card because I competed in 2019 alone nine times i took second place in seven times seven where, times in row where, like, where so. did you win the pro card what show did you win in italy it was a yamamoto cup september exactly oh okay so that's where you got your yeah. pro card and your first pro <laughs> show was uh first pro show in the same day but i didn't i i, I didn't see it as a like a pro debut because oh. i cheated a lot on the after so on the same day, like I on the day after, I cheated a lot, so I was so fat. Really? Oh, so you I, so you won your pro card Saturday, and then you you went and did, competed in the pros on Sunday. Yes, on Sunday. Oh, yeah, okay, so, got you. So I didn't see it as a pro debut because, like, I didn't I didn't give it to all. I was I I was so happy with winning my pro card, so I was cheating a lot, eating a lot, and the, the day after, I was like a balloon on the stage. <laughs> I, I I wasn't happy with my shape, <laughs> but I was like, okay, I will. Because that was Brion was there, so I just wanted to stand next to him to feel like okay, I'm standing next to Mr. Olympia. That time he was Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I remember. I remember that show now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then like uh, one year later, I did uh, my proper pro debut, which is London Pro, and I took third mm -hmm. in that show. And then, my first pro show. And then, and then you won the Arnold UK, right? Uh, no, I did, uh, later on, I did in the same year, Italy, one week before the Arnold. Like, uh, Patrick was very strict. I shouldn't do it because he told me it's very, like, uh, like short time between two shows. It's like Sunday, it was, uh, Saturday was Italy show, and mm -hmm. then Friday, Arnold, uh, UK. So I told him, like, just like, uh, I just wanted to see myself how I would look so I can fix things until the Arnold. He said, but you have a very short time and making weight is not easy for you. So I had to go to it. I went to Italy. I took second place with the, my teammate from the same coach of Patrick too. He was happy anyway, because it's his clients who won the show first and second. Mm. Yeah. But he told me that he, from the beginning, he was against me to go into Italy. I took second in there and then I went back to Arnold and I won the Arnold UK. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So this is where you qualified for your Olympia. Yep, I'm qualified yeah. as an Olympia for that from that show. So, so, so you've been working with Patrick for how long now? 
uh, two years almost. Two okay. years. He is amazing coach. Like yeah. he cares so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he's he's very hands on with guys. I know that. But I want to know why. How do you get in into that crazy condition? What do you do? Are you naturally, you know, easy to lose really, body fat? Or? It, not really. It's uh, it, I gain fat very quickly, but I lose fat as well very quickly. It's like I consider myself. It's not easy to lose fat, but as as well, it's not easy to gain fat mm -hmm. as long as I'm eating from, oh, right. The thing is, uh, as you said, like on the commentator. Like I don't have the, I, I don't have weakness, but I don't have the, their prettiness on the stage. They like the classic guys. Mm. They have very amazing great keeper. I, I don't have it. So in my in my mind, like to get into there, I need to bring something they don't have. Yeah, exactly. So I work very, so I work very hard on conditioning, so I can bring something. If any one of them came off. I will take them down because I brought something they don't have. Mm -hmm. Even of the top guys, if you say, if you saw, like even they are over me, they are in the top four. I still have better conditioning than them, but my shape it's not as pretty as them. Mm -hmm. wait, wait. Yeah. So, did you do anything different in, to get in that condition? Is that the first time you were super peeled, or is that something you you, you always look like? That? Yeah, I. It was the first time I looked first that time. super peeled. Yeah. So what did you do different from, from all the other years or the other times you competed? Yeah, the, like uh, usually when I was comp when I used to compete, I used to do a cheat meal. Like uh, but this prep, like me and Patrick decided like no cheat meal. Like refeed will be only sushi sometimes. Like he call it cheat meal, I call it refeed. <laughs> like Patrick, he said it's a cheat meal. I don't know. Sushi is not cheap. You know, rice and some salmon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, uh, on whole the prep, which is it started 13 weeks out, we had only five refeeds, and mm. like uh, we could push him very, very hard into that condition. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Like our goal was to bring something they don't have. And I, we brought I, it, like. I understand, but did you do anything different other than not having cheat meals training-wise, or did you do more cardio? Or was it just, yeah, or was it just like something that I think it was because everybody has this at one point in his career, where you get ready for a show and your body just responds to everything you do, and everything just fucking works. You condition all of a sudden. You eight nine weeks out and you feel like you two weeks out, and your body just everything just works. Was it was it like kind of like this, or or, or was it really not hard? Not really. Not so, really. I will tell you a side story. Like, tell me everything. I want to know. Is, yeah, yeah. The thing is, as I told you, I spoke with you like on your live video that I didn't get the visa. It was like same like Hadi Shupan situation. So I didn't get the visa until very until the very end before the show. Mm. So all that time I was stressed. I was holding so much water, and I was pushing so hard. Like we increased cardio more than the usual. Usually we do only thirty minutes per day. He like Patrick raised it to 45 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes post workout, like not post workout between my meal five and six. So we usually we don't do that much of cardio because, as I say, we don't do cheat meals. So we always stay like we lose like uh, like half kilo every week, one kilo every week, and nor and, and like a normal progress, good progress. But that time our weight was steady. And we're not losing weight most of the time, and we're just like pushing really hard. And like, I start telling Patrick why it's like this. He said it's a new head because you're stressed about the visa and about this and about this. So when we start pushing, 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 I think what happened, I start losing so much body fat. My my, my body was keeping like kept retaining water. I wasn't in very good shape at three weeks out. From like from from my view, I was like. I'm off. <laughs> I'm really off. But when start things like start getting really good about the situation of the visa, 
I start losing so weight every week, two kilos more. Even like one week, I lost four kilos. Just mm. few water. What, what, what we were doing the same thing, exactly the same thing. What was different was like uh, I think I I was more relaxed. Your mind so was the free. The water start coming. Yeah, my mind was free. So I start pulling all the water out, and I was like shocked with the condition. Like start coming all together i was like wow mm. what's happening just like losing fat from everywhere but it was only water at that time so so how, how was it like knowing that the way you looked i mean that you got to feel good about yourself i don't care what no, <laughs> what nobody says going into the arnold knowing you look the way you look how, do, how did you feel confident. you confident i felt very confident i felt like super amazing i i felt i'm bringing the best of myself which mm. is made me very proud of me and patrick like i knew i'm coming there in very good shape i know i, I like even patrick knows that he always tell me you not you don't have the best shape of them but you definitely have something they don't have and you bring something like you bring something to the table you, they will say wow yeah. And that was my goal, and I brought it. I was really confident with the way I looked. So I went there. I was like, I was hoping to be in the top five. Like I knew I was against the top five Olympian, like second, third, fourth, and fifth. Even Peter Mona is good. Divine is very good. They are both top ten Olympians. So, so I was against six people coming from the top ten Olympia. So I knew it's like not easy. Even I, if I brought my best. My goal was to be top five. I'm happy I made it. Like uh, I was super confident, like proud of the the way I looked with my placing, like my Arnold debut, making top five, beating P Peter Molnar, who was eight, nine at the Olympia, Divine, who was eight at the Olympia. So I'm just like standing between the eight and the, and the fifth. So it's I'm in this spot, which has made me feel very happy mm. with myself because they, it's not, I used always to hear it like you look bulky, you look, you don't look classic. Okay, I didn't choose to have the shape. It's my waist. It's maybe a little wider, mm -hmm. but I think mostly I have very weak lats. That's why I look like bulky from the middle, like midsection. Which is, if I walked on my lats better, I think I would have a much a better V table, which would make me look better on the stage. So you don't think you can bring up your lats? I, I think I can bring up my lats until yeah. the Olympia, because I'm taking now seven months off. Like, I will start off season after two months, so mm. I can focus only on the lats. I, I think I can bring it up so I can, like, be in that top five spot in the Olympia, because my only weakness, I see it as a lats, which is I can fix, because I can't change my waist. This is the way it looks. It's something mm. the God give us, like, yeah. it's something we can't do something anything about it. I can practice vacuum. I can like suck it a little bit more, but the most I can work on is my lats, which is all my goal. All this off season is to bring up my lats. Yeah, because I because I'm just thinking. I mean, you know, because you said your goal was to be top five. Because at the end of the day, you know, most of these guys might have look su really. superior shape. <laughs> yeah, not, not the yeah, condition. I don't have it. Not the condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but how do you motivate yourself to? You know, because I, I think everybody wants to win, you know, you're training of because course, you want to course. win. But if you already tell um, yourself, is that I don't have the shape to stand next to these guys when it comes down to it. What what other options do you see or do you think about that might be coming, you know, towards your way in the future? What what, what do you think is there? It's like 212 or is there any, have you like, thought about something else? Yeah, I thought about 212, but for five, nine guys, it's, a little, a little tough decision to make a 212 mm. like move uh, because I will be 5'9 against 5'2, five 5'3 five people, 5'4, five 5'5. Yeah, five no, five. they're not, they're not that, they're not that short. <laughs> no, you can't, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't measure everybody after Sean Clarita. They're not all that short. <laughs> so do you, I think the average weight in the two, uh, average height in the 212 is somewhere around 5'6, five, 5'7. You know, five eight. Yeah, so five nine is not that big when you yeah. bring the condition. Because because when you bring, like, the, when, I think. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. When, when you bring the, when you bring the condition, your your body creates an illusion, and you look much bigger than you really are. What 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 is your cutoff weight in in classic? 
94 kilo and then uh, 2 on 2 I will be 96 so for, uh, two, for, two, for, for the you at 207 that's your cutoff and how much do, do you have to suffer to make weight not really like I was 207 like five days out so we just kept it steady okay so yeah. I can like uh, uh, and we didn't use any diuretics, so all the time, even on the show day, which is shocked, shock people most of the time, like how did you didn't use diuretics and you looked that ill? Because mm. I looked ill even one week out, like that. Wh that's why I we kept it the same. We just like increased, like, like Patrick's very smart. We kept it all the way the same, even when I was one week out. We kept, we like just kept the weight as it is. Until I, we made the weight, we, we pushed carbs. We kept it all the way the same. Yeah. How how uh, when when how many days do you have after you check and uh, you check in until the show? How many days? Because I think sometimes One day. For, that's it. Twenty four hours. Yeah, I think sometimes they should give the guys a little bit more time for classic to to carb up. Yeah. You know. I agree. I think especially. And uh, my view, my view is like I think the weight class is. Is unfair because they, they they measure it on inches, which is if I was half centimeters taller, I would get more, four kilo more on the stage. Just because I'm one seventy seven, some uh, on the on the morning one seventy seven and a half, and the night I'm one seventy seven. What about so if <laughs> I tried, <laughs> I never uh, reached. <laughs> you got to start working with the tricks. You got to stretch yourself. You got to do things to get. If it's yeah, only half but, a centimeter, come on, yeah, I, I will. Yeah. I will. They will call me Mr. Long Neck. Yeah, I would, come out like this. I, would, I would hit myself in. I would hit myself in the head with a hammer to create a damn, <laughs> just to get an inch or something. <laughs> That's true. I think you don't want to risk it. You know, you just yeah. you don't want to say like I will be one seventy eight, and they will measure you one seventy seven and a half, and they will give you ninety four kilo only. So they, and you they like, always measure you the same height. You ne you was never a little bit taller or shorter. I was. I was. Yeah, because it happens all the time. That's why I'm yeah, asking. I yeah. said, why don't you just, you know, yeah, put on the high yeah, heels. Well, like in Italy show, in Italy show, they told me I, we can be like uh, uh, two. 14 i was shocked i was like i'm, I'm two seven uh, like two two fourteen pounds amazing i can put like seven pound more eight yeah, pound I more think, I, muscles I, I think when when they should because i see this a lot of times it happens that guys get get they check their height and then some of them just like oh no you're shorter and then some of the next show you're taller they should check the height one time and just you know put it in in, in the computer this is where you're at you know, 100%, I agree. they should or just they check should. the weight after that, not the height anymore. 100%, 100%. Or they should make it on the centimeters, which is more fair, I think, because yeah. inches, like, it make 5'8 to 5'9, there is like 4, 5 centimeters different. Like, yeah. If they make it on the centimeter, it's more fair. 177, I, I, I'm the same weight of the guy who is 175. We can wait the same on the stage mm. because I'm. If I was half centimeter taller, I would be in the next category, which is would give me four kilo more. Right. Which is, I think, it's unfair. If I was like, if they make it on the centimeters, they will give you exactly what you deserve. Mm. How, yeah. How, how after the Arnold? I mean, you got what fifth or sixth? Fifth. Fifth. How did that feel? Coming off, you know, knowing that you know it's 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 the Arnold and it was your first one. So leaving leaving the Arnold, what was what, what, first of all? I want to know what was your first meal, and then I want to know <laughs> what was the what was the plan immediately after the Arnold? Because I know the motivation is really sky high when you just place well. Yeah. You know you had a great showing. You know what was yeah. the so what's the game plan right now? And, and you know you're obviously not qualified for the Olympia this year yet, so you still would have I, to qualify. I am. You already qualified because that uh, Arnold qualified me for the next year Olympia because it was oh. one week before the, uh, the Olympia. Oh, so this was the Arnold. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that, oh, okay, so you qualified for so that's why you're sitting out now and, and just taking it. Yeah. So what's the game plan yeah. right now going into the Olympia? Defend my title at the Arnold UK, bring in better lats, like make the game flat plan all about lats. Because all the feedback of the judges, they say you need to make your waist smaller somehow, or you need to build up your lats because you may, you can make the illusion of small waist. So what are you doing? So up. what what are you doing and trying to bring the lats up? What what's what are you focusing on right now, training wise? 
like uh, everything is like dumbbell row, everything is pull, everything is verse. I used to look like do a lot like of normal grip. Now all my training on the back is reverse, which is will activate more lats. Yeah, is that because so you want to? Is that because you want to bring the lats a little bit lower too? Yeah. yeah. So uh, like even when I spoke with Akeem because he had the same issue of having high lat, the same issue as me. He said just train it every fucking day. I told him, every day, he said, do a pull-up every day. This is what I do. That, what he do, I actually. I would suggest that, too. I was just about to tell you. I said, if I was you, I would probably do pull-ups every day before every workout, whatever you train. Let's say you go in for chest, do four or five sets of pull-ups first. And then the next... That's what Akim exactly told me. Yeah. That he said, do a pull-up every day. He said, it will, it, you, you will get shocked how, how well you will improve. Yeah. He said, you do, you do back twice a day, which is focus on the lats. But do like uh, pull up every day. I told him every day. What? But I will kill the muscle. He said, No, 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 no. Don't listen to this bullshit. Just listen yeah. to me. I, no. I'm having the same issue as you. I like. He's the big one of the biggest guy on the world. So I will definitely like listen to his advice. So you train? You doing pull ups every day? Now I'm doing a pull up every day. Yeah, and and then you get to the point where you can add some weight to it. You know, add some. You know, like a plate or two. And just do the wide, wide grip pull-ups, you know? I always tell myself, yeah. the wider the grip, the wider the back. Yeah. You know? That's, uh, yeah. Because yeah. you, 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 if you bring that up, you, be, and you bring the condition that you had. And it's, gonna be, it's not going to be easy to, to... It's not easy. It's not because they have very pretty shape. They are very nice. No, I, no, I, no. What I'm, I'm saying is... I'm not gay, but when I see <laughs> they look fucking good. Nobody, <laughs> hey, no, nobody gay around here. So listen, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is it's not going to be easy to duplicate the condition that you had. It's just, I always tell guys, it's just, there's just one time where you just come, where everything comes together, and that's the condition that you're going to be chasing now every time you get ready for every shows. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that, that's that part. But if you bring, if you make, you know, the necessary improvements, and, you know, it might not be as much as you want by the Olympia, but you're still young. You still have so much time you yeah. can put on, yeah. you know, but, you can like, put on. I, I love always to grow more because, Actually, it's just like when I saw bodybuilding, I was like uh, about 180. And now I'm on the stage to seven, 207, which is about 27 pounds in like short period of time. Mm -hmm. I can, I think I can grow more into open bodybuilding more than 212 because I see myself as an open bodybuilder more than see myself at 212. Yeah. Yeah. But it will take me like after the Olympia, I need to decide if I want to do the open show. I need to take one year of like not competing at all just focusing on putting size as much as i can and come back really strong same like pet did yeah what's your strongest body part and what's your weakest but i mean weakest body parts probably your, your lats but what what do you think is your strongest body part uh legs and shoulders yeah yeah i feel like my legs like respond very quickly like i train it once per week and it's just ex explode uh -huh. same like my shoulders but I train my chest and my lats really hard, and they really tough to grow. So, do, so do you have to watch what you eat during you know in off season so you don't get too heavy? Yeah, yeah. Because if I eat as much as I want, I get really, really heavy, and like it will be very difficult for me to cut down to make weight. Yeah. Like uh, I'm still now ninety eight kilo, which is four kilo over my weight. But I I'm on off everything, so I'm just like yeah. Just uh, giving, the, giving, the body, giving the body some time. Yeah, so recover. like I lost some size, but at the same time, I put some body fat. But I still in a great shape. I did posing with the big Grammy like... Uh, I was just yesterday. about to ask you that because I saw you. Uh, where are you right now? In Egypt. I was in London. I visited Egypt. So I, I, just, I was thinking, I was like, what the hell? He's posting a picture with Rami. How, how was that? Tell me about that workout. You guys were training wow, hamstrings really, together. I felt really good, like... Getting a follow from Big Ramy from you after the show, I felt like superstar. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this, is, this is like uh, who? Who am I? Like, I, like you, I Michael Dabo, the most shredders guy <laughs> on the whole Arnold weekend. So you know that's who you are. Thank you. So, Thank you. but so really how honest. did you did you ever meet Rami before, or was that the first time no. you guys met? No, it was the first time. It was so, the first time I texted him. He's you know him. Like I heard how hum how humble he is. Uh -huh. But when you see it, it's different. I think this guy is 
Like, it's crazy in some because yeah. he, as ma- he's so humble that you think this is not normal. Yeah. He's so good, so nice person. I, I, I don't see myself that nice. Yeah. <laughs> so he's unbelievable nice. I, I text him, can I have a walkout to, like with you? I'm staying in Egypt for uh, like two weeks and seeing my family. He said, of course, you deserve it. Come to this gym, blah, blah, blah. He's see, that's, nice see that's so cool. You know, not a lot of people would just say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll find ways to excuse us, you know. He's Mr. Olympia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Olympia, I just asked him, he said, yeah, come on, I should work out with you. I was like, over the, over the moon, I couldn't believe it. Like, Mr. Olympia is telling me it's fine. Come on, have a workout. Like, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe myself. What, like, the whole workout out to him. I can't believe I'm training with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So, so did did you guys just train hamstrings? Yeah, we just did hamstring, uh, and and then when we finished, he like he checked on me. Uh, we did some posing. He said like you like he was impressed with my lats he said, because I kept telling him like I have a weak lats. He said it's really improved. <laughs> if you have weak lats, it's really improved in those three weeks. I told him like I'm I'm all for everything. I shouldn't be improving. Yeah. <laughs> he said, no, you're still improving. You can improve when you, especially in the rip pound. After the show, you can pull, put some nice size because I kept my food really clean. Mm-hmm. I'm not eating like barely any rubbish yeah. after the show. I, 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 I like, ate a lot. I can, tell, I can tell you in England because you're rubbish, rubbish. <laughs> 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 we call it garbage. You guys call it rubbish. <laughs> so, so when you're in England, so you, do you train by yourself or you have a training partner? Anybody trains with you or trains you, helps you out? No, I train by myself. I used to, like... People don't believe it. I used to train in 24-7 gym, normal, which is oh. they have the heaviest dumbbells, 40 kilo. Only 40 kilo are the heaviest dumbbell they have. I kept training in that gym until two weeks before the, three weeks out from the Olympia, yeah. uh, from the Arnold. I moved to my new house, which is far away, a little bit far away from London, which is 40 miles driving from London. Mm-hmm. And I had a good gym in there. The last three weeks was a really good gym, like proper like hardcore gym. You know what you, you know what I think you need? I think you need someone need to bring you somewhere for like a month just to get some good workouts in, you know, some real different styles, different workouts where you you know, I know it's it's good to train by yourself and, and you know, and if you can motivate yourself, but sometimes that little extra push, that little extra twist helps a lot. I agree because when I trained with Rami, I trained with another guy. He's called, his name is Big Jalal. He's 212. I trained today with him. And like yesterday, I trained chess with another guy. It's completely different mm-hmm. level of com- like training. They killed me. Like after the training of Rami, I still have pain in my hamstring and my glutes. I can't feel it. I can't feel it at all. I was, and he, he goes very heavy <laughs> and yeah. you need to keep going with it. Until like, especially in the leg press, I don't know why. I told her, I will not go that heavy. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm out. So, I'm out so now, so now, your your visa issues is everything's good now with the US. You have a visa. You're good to go. Uh, they gave me only like three months visa, so oh. I need to apply again. So hopefully next time they say the first time the hardest. You diet down, train hard. And supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. Get, try to get it early. Cause I was just yeah, I will apply I'm, straight away when I come back to Egypt. hundred percent. The first thing I will do when I come back to England, first day, same day, I will apply for the visa. For are you now. still in Egypt now? Yeah. I'm oh, calling so, from Egypt today. Oh, okay. So you're still in Egypt. Okay. So when you get back to Egypt, because I was just about to say, I was gonna let's say I want to offer you something. You know, I'm gonna offer yeah. you. I would I would like to help you in the gym. When it comes to training, you know, just to give you a little extra kick, you know, just to push you a little bit. You really mean it? I, re- I wouldn't say it if I wouldn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would never say it. Man, I, w- I will be honored. I will be honored. Like, yeah, because, you like, know. Cause to if, come to your gym, like, at three, two, three weeks out, like, to train with you, it's like, it would be an honor to me. Yeah. Really, seriously. Also, uh, not, not only just before the show, I mean, in off-season, just to make the improvement. 
just to introduce you. If they will you, give me a visa, I will come to you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why I'm saying try try to get the visa early. Don't wait because a lot of people wait too long and then because you never know how yeah. long. Especially now with with all the shit that's going on with the you know it might straight they might take longer than expected. So do it early. 100%. When you get back, 100%. immediately apply apply for a longer visa. Uh, I will. Tell them. I will do like yeah. unfortunately I don't I don't have choice. They give me what they want. Yeah. I ask them for ten years visa and they give me three months. So I know, yeah, and it's, it's up and, to them. And it's it's easier now I think because they saw you had a visa, you came, you left, and you returned back home, so everything was easy. But next time you reply, let me know. I'm gonna write you a I'm gonna write you a letter where I uh, basically invite you to uh, you know we'll just say Camp Menace. You know, so, you know, they maybe give you a little bit longer because, I, you know, I can put a time frame there to see that I would like to have you there for, I don't know, two months or something for you to train. So maybe they, you know, they accept that and give you a longer visa, you know. Thank you so much. That's, I'm really honored. Because I, I want to you see so you. Much. I want to see you. I want to see your potential. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see what you can do with your body. Because yeah. with the condition yeah, that you I'm can really bring. Honored. No, I, I, I would be yeah. interesting. I, I, I like to help, you know, this is what I do. You know, and Thank and, you so much. and when you Thank see someone, I'll, I'm re- huh? I will never forget. Now, like oh, like when I will go sleep now all the day, I will think about. I will go to Dennis. I will yeah. Go to Dennis. yeah, I mean, this is what I do. I, I mean, I'm, I've been doing this for so long, you know, and it's it's not that I know more than others. I definitely don't, but it's the motivation that 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 you know that, that, that when there's chemistry and I, if I can motivate you to do things that you wouldn't do if you're by yourself. That's already that's that's all I want. I just want you to go that extra mile to see because if you don't give a hundred percent, you can't expect a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? And First of all, I just want to say if you're not one of the best, you like you if you are not the best, you're definitely one of the top ten or one of the best training coaches in the world. So I will be honored to be with you, like uh, training under your, your guidance. I know you are you know more than. A lot of people will know, like you. I, I don't in my even, eyes, you are yeah, your I, top trainer. Like. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I don't see myself like that. I just see myself as because you are so humble. So I'm like just, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just who I am, and I like to help. I like to see people change things around, especially when 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 some people say, you know, you know, that's his flaws, and you know, and there's probably a few people that say you will never look like that. You will, you, you know, you can't stand next to these guys. You know, and, and they might they might be right, but maybe they're wrong. And I would like to I would like to find out if this is if there's a possibility for you to basically transform your shoulder to waist ratio by yeah, you might not be able to make the waist smaller, but you can you can widen your lats and probably even widen the shoulders a little bit to create a little bit more of an illusion and then top that off with your con- top that off with your condition and A. You got, hey, you got you got some a lethal weapon right there, you know. And I think Patrick would would appreciate that too, you know. I'm not trying yeah. to I'm, I'm not trying to you know pull you pull you away from Patrick because I think <laughs> you guys are fucking perfect. No, together. he's hundred percent. He is hundred percent. Will tell me you got this chance. Yeah. Go fucking for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that just, I will hundred percent. You know because because it it think it works. You know sometimes you're getting a little kick in the ass. You know during, during training helps. You know. And like I said, if you're motivated, that's all you need. Um, I, like I've never been so motivated in my life. Like I, <laughs> I always like uh, fuck it post show, but this time I'm so sick because I'm so happy with what I did, with the yeah. improvement I did, with the like condition I brought, with the shape I brought. But I know I can get better. I, I know that there is still missing part in yeah. me, which is lats, which is I can bring up. It's a muscle I can fix. Mm. But as long as it's, it's not at the waist, as long as like, I can bring the right. like the lats and I make the illusion, I know I can be better. I can do better next time. Mm-hmm. Like I already, I beat people in the top ten of the Olympia. This is for me. It's like high spike. Like right. it's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like for me, it's so big deal. Like people don't see it. Like, I appreciate it so much that I'm still considered like as a top ten Olympian. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're top five Arnold now. So I mean, and 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 there was literally the top guys there only. I mean, yeah, other yeah, than other than top, Chris, top other than Chris Bumstead, there was everybody was there in the top five. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And yeah, I, I and can't you're... wait for the Olympia. I, I know I can bring more. I can be better. 
Like now you give me like a more motivation to come to train under your guidance. Like this is will be so big. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't believe it. I'm I'm really happy. Like I will try as as much as I can. I, I can to get the, like the visa as fast as I can, so I come to, so I can come to you and like <laughs> ask, fix myself. Ask, <laughs> ask Rami, ask Rami how much he enjoys the workouts. <laughs> 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 he's trying to he's trying to push it out further every time because <laughs> he knows because he knows yeah. he gets his yeah. ass he gets his ass whooped. But how 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 is he doing? How is he doing over there? Because I haven't I haven't seen he's him doing very well. Like. He's doing very well. He's training really hard. Like he's pushing himself over the limit. But I know he can still push him hard, like more because like after the ten reps, he still have five more. Ah, fuck it, like let, yeah. let him go. <laughs> but if if he said like if there is James Mazzi, I will not finish in ten reps. <laughs> you might be finished with ten. You know that's not the, the, the how many reps is not the point. It's just you know to do the right thing at the right time. That's yeah. that's what makes a difference, you know. And I think you sh while you're still in Egypt, how much longer are you gonna be there? Another one week. Another he, week. Should, he should get a couple of more workouts with Rami in, you know. Yeah, I will try. I will try. Like he, Te he doesn't live very far from me, so text it, my te family is here. Text him and, and text him and said, "I said, to take you through a couple of workouts with him." <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. T tell him. T tell him. I said so. You know, okay. I want I want to see I want to see you guys together because you know that's that's you know and also good for videos you know you guys need to and and we need to see a little bit more from Rami on on social media too. Just because he's on social media, he's like uh, like no one sees him, no one sees him. Like when I recorded, like people was please post it all, please post it all the workout every second with you like uh, yeah. with Rami. We want to see him. Yeah. Like people missing him. They want to see him on yeah. the social media, he's, which has he's, disappeared for a while. Uh, he's not that, he's, I don't know, he's not that guy that, you know, that's all open into the public and, you know, he knows, he, he knows he, he needs to do it. But, you know, unless someone says, okay, let's do this now and, and, and does it for him, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, because if you yeah. know him and you met him, you know how he is, he's just... Everything is just it's a little bit too laid, too laid back sometimes, you know. <laughs> he's he's just too humble. Hundred percent. You know, I told him yeah, I said, he's very to, humble. I told him you need to post more on Instagram, you know, and he wants to. But uh I don't know, for whatever reason. So get a couple of workouts <laughs> in with him, man, and, and, and post it and, and maybe send me some footage if you have, because I can post it for him too. Because we need I to get him out. Do. We need to get him out. All right, so now let's talk about the, the Olympia this year. Okay, so you qualify for the Olympia. Let's go. We got Chris Bumstead. Can Chris Bumstead be beat? No. You think he can? Not even the next year. Okay. <laughs> if I think there is only one guy who I think he is really good, really, really good, and he never did the Olympia before. He's a Brazilian called Horse, and his like Marcelo. I think his nickname on. Uh, like on social media on Instagram, yeah, yeah. I know, stuff. I know, and, yeah, and I know who you're talking about. He's unbelievable. He he got crazy structure. This guy is big. He's he got everything. He got nice rack and nice V table. I think he's really scared. I think he, he and even Keon when he came back to the classic, those two are really really like good mm. and they can like shake the story on at the Olympia. But is Keon really doing classic? Because he looks too big to me for, to me right now. I mean, he looks like he's he changed his mind. I'm not sure, but he said he will do. He will come back to classic if he did. He said that at the he said say, that yeah he said that after the Olympia last year. But since then, he's been putting on weight, and I don't think he's he, he's doing classic. I tell you, he, you didn't he, have he, to lose he too much. Massive. Yeah, too big. He looked massive. So, so yeah. you think Chris Bumsey can't be beat if there's. Anybody you have to choose right now, other than this guy that we talked about, because he's not even competing in 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 the in the, uh, in in the pro shows yet. From the guys that are there, do you think there's anybody there that can potentially beat Chris Bumstead? Maybe not this year, no. but maybe next year, or maybe in two years. So you think there's nobody I don't there? See anyone. Really? Nobody there. Like there? Really? Yeah. Because like he's so like genetic, like gifted by crazy structure. Like the front double bicep is fine. Great. Every every shot, every mm. shot you feel like he's just genetically gifted with crazy structure. This mm. structure is very hard to be beaten unless like someone came with crazier structure. Yeah, it's gotta be it's gotta be someone who's somewhat his height. 
you know? And that's yeah. why I think this Urs, Urs, who's very young, yeah. who's 23 years old, and then Ramon from Brazil, I think those are the yeah. two guys that will push Chris the hardest in the future. Yeah. Okay. I'm I agree. They both really like. I saw them in real life. They look phenomenal. Yeah. They are. They have very nice physique. And and I like, don't know. Especially Ramon. Yeah. Especially and, Ramon. He's really like freak on the on real life. He looked really really good. Yeah. And I and I'm not sure if they're gonna beat Chris before Chris decides to retire. But I think if then it's. Either one of it's one of the two guys, and I don't know about the other guy that you just mentioned. I, I, we have to see him on stage next to these guys because everybody looks good standing by I himself. Agree. You know, you I have agree. to you have to compare them when they stand next to each other, and you can really see, you know, the flaws and the shape difference. You know, from guys, you know, with the with the waist and stuff. So so it's hard. But I I saw pictures of this guy, and I said the same thing. What, why is he not competing? <laughs> where where yeah. is he? is he yeah. doing the is is he pro? He turned pro last year, so I think he's do he, he was like uh, shaking about doing open or classic. So he's not sure about doing classic or open. So he and, hasn't uh, even decided. So he's not doing the uh, the Brazil. Now, now he decided he will do class. He, he will do classic. He decided this year he will do classic. So he because he needed two kilo to make weight for classic, or he was thinking about like taking one year off and going to the open. Because he's really tall as well. Uh, really, so really is he tall. is he doing the Brazil Arnold now in in six weeks? Uh, I'm not sure, but no. I think he will do a show in 100 this year for classic, no. and I definitely without doubt in my mind he will win it easily. Okay, so well listen, do you going to be on the Olympia stage? That's for that's 100. That's a giving. We got till, till December. I'm coming to the. Make I'm sure coming you to the Olympia. My goal is to be top five, and I think I can get it. Especially now with your offer of like helping me with my training, I think I will hundred percent make it. Hey, hey, listen, I believe that the sky is the limit. You know, it's just up to yeah. you know how much sacrifice you able, you know, or you willing to give. And you know, everybody says I I do everything a hundred percent, but there's only a few that really do everything a hundred percent. So I, I know that from way back in the days. Everybody says, yeah, I give it my all. You all, you know, people sometimes don't know how much they can really give because there's so much more in there. And sometimes it takes yeah. someone else to push you and motivate you to get to that point. And then you realize it's just it's the same with Rami. When Rami, um, you know, Rami, everybody said Rami's going to win the Olympia since he showed up in 2013, you know, but it never happened. And then we got to a point where people, you know, they weren't worried about Rami no more. He's like, ah. hope. yeah. And all of a sudden he shows up in shape, which I said since 2013, if he ever nails it, he's going to be unbeatable, you know? 100%. But sometimes, he, he, all these years, he didn't realize what it really takes to get to that point, you know? And he had to learn, you know, and, 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 and he realized that that's, that's not easy, you know? And, uh, and to do yeah. this every year, that's why I believe that our sport is the hardest sport when it comes to, you know, making sacrifices, being disciplined and not only the training, but the cardio, then they got, you got to put in the meals and there's so much that goes into bodybuilding. It's, it's, un, it's ridiculous, you know, for a lot of people yeah. and the people from the outside, they look at us like, oh, they're stupid. Why do they eat so much? And you know what I mean? So, so therefore I say, listen, give it a hundred percent and you're going to get a hundred percent back. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the Olympia stage. Hopefully we'll see you before, you know, But I wish you all the best. Stay healthy. Get back to uh to England safe. Get the visa out the way. Do that shit right away. Don't even wait. I will come back to England straight away to try to get the visa as fast as I can. Get it from now. Like give you a visit for a couple of weeks in New Gym so you can push me so much harder yeah. so well, I can bring those slats up. And like uh, I'm motivated, I'm really motivated. I can bring something I I never brought before. Yeah. I still like put my best to the album, but I still feel yeah. there is something I can bring this, more. This condition is going to be hard to beat. I'm telling tell you this right now. If you can just <laughs> if you could just duplicate it, that's it. That, that, that there's not much more you can do. I'm telling you right yeah. now. I'm not talking about the body wise muscle. You can put on more tissue, yes, but condition. 
there's nothing else you can do. There's nothing you can do there. Yeah. No, no, there's nothing else. You, what, what are you gonna do? You put you can put the extra cut an extra line in there somewhere. There's not <laughs> there's nothing you can do. That's why, you know, just make if you can keep that up and you can just maintain to come in this kind of crazy condition, you will definitely have your place in, in, in this sport, regardless of 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 some type of your shape. Because you know you're going to be known as being Mr. Super Peeled, all right? Yeah, same like uh, the guy who was in the '90s, '80s. I forgot Munzer. I think Andres Andres Munzer, or from Turkey, Munzer. Hamdullah. Yeah, Hamdullah Akut. Yeah. Ak- yeah, super super peeled. Not the biggest guys, but yeah. super shredded, and that always looks great. Yeah. Brother, I appreciate you coming on, talking to me, my man. I'm looking forward to uh, putting something together with you, man, for real. Thank you so much. Thank you for the offer, Falk. Thank you for the opportunity for me to bring me here to this podcast. One of the best, if not the best. For me, it's the best because I always wait for you, like any opposite of yours. And now I'm on your channel. I can't yes. believe you're gonna be, you yeah, so you're you're gonna, so you, 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 This is going to be out this Sunday. So on Sunday, you can go watch yours. Thank you so much for giving me this chance, like Anytime, being Jim. with you, with the legend himself, Dennis James, <laughs> like to be here. I, I can't believe it. Thank, Thank you so much for this. You're welcome, my man. You're welcome. You deserve it, my man. And I'm looking forward to you doing great things. All right, my man. Take care. God bless you. And stay safe. <laughs> you too. See you, see you soon. Bye. <laughs>